So welcome, I'm going to explain to you what module scripts are and how and why you should use them. So let's start off by saying that module scripts are a script, but they are not a normal script. They are a Lua container that only runs once and returns a certain value. In our case, it is a module variable that's declared as a table. And to use them, we basically need to require them. So for example, I can name this module just mod and I'm going to add a script and just name this one server. And we require the module by doing a require call. So I can do local mod is equal require. And this target is our module script. So we do server script service that mod. And we don't need to use wait for child or anything because the require call already waits for the target to return something. So in this case, it's waiting for the module script to return the module. And I'm going to print out the module and just hit run. And you can see that it returned an empty table. And just to show you what happens if the module doesn't return anything, it just throws an error saying module code didn't return exactly one value. Since the module is a container that must return a value and the value must be singular. So if you had like few different variables, we won't be able to return them, and it's going to throw the same error. But we can return a table which holds multiple values. This is the variable 1 and variable 2. So now that you know what module scripts are, now you are probably just asking a question on why I should use them. And well, I'm going to tell you why. The biggest thing would be that you can require the modules from many different places. If I were to put this module inside of the server storage, change this one to server storage, and just duplicate the script, name this one server 2, and then just print it out server2, what it's going to do, it's going to print out two tables. And that's from both of these scripts that require the same module. And not only you can require them, but you can also affect what's inside of the module from many different scripts too. If I were to change this module to variables and just give some test values, now if I run it, you would see that we have a table with test and test2. So now inside of the server script, We can assign the value from the module on the server that we can also print out. It printed out one, but we can also change the values from the server. And just in case the script runs first, I'm going to do a task with one and then print out the module to show you how we change the value on that server two. So this script, the server two, changed the test value two to three because it added one. And now this server one is going to have a free value right here also. So the server two script affected a value that was also being used by this server one script right here. So that was the main useful case for module scripts. So you could use modules to let's say have global settings like this, but there is also different stuff that we can do. We could also have it so the module, and I need to make a function, function for this, sets a data individually instead of globally. So you can return like a table, let's say, and this is going to be a data table that's going to hold who and the bar. And these are just some string values. So inside of the first script, we can do data is equal to module and set data. And then we can also do it inside of the server too. So now if I were to change the first index of data in server 1, we can do data from 1 is equal to, since this one is going to be full, I'm gonna change this one to not full. And then just print out the data from server 1. And inside of server 2, I'm going to do task wait one second. And then print out the data from server 2. Just to show you that the data from this server is going to be different than the data from this server. So here we have server 1 and 2. Server 1 has not foo and bar. And server 2 has foo and bar. So that's how you can assign data individually in different scripts from the same module. Just by doing something like this. So overall, you can have multiple sources affect the same variables inside of a module as well as having multiple sources use the same variables too and these multiple sources can also assign individual variables to themselves so not only you can have global settings you can also have something like metadata like right here but it's also possible to return other values from a module script like a function that can also take some arguments let's just give it a number and let's just print it out so I'm just going to do this inside of the first server. So this module script returns a function that takes an argument, which is a number argument. So we can do my number is equal to module, and we use it as a function in this case. That's going to print out the argument number, so you can give it like 5 value. And now if I'm going to run it, it's just going to print out 5, like this. 
and of course you can have a combination of them like I have right here where you can also change values inside of the module script with a function. I'm actually just going to change this one to number. So now if I run it, this script is going to add 5 value to the test variable that's inside of the module. So it's going to print out 6 right here. And if I were to use the server to script, I could do module add value and let's say add 10. And first it's going to print out 6 and then it's going to print out 16 or 11 and then 16 depending on which script ran first. So first the server 2 added the value and then the server 1 added the value. But yeah, and there is also a thing with the module scripts that they yield, which means that they wait until a value is returned to the required call. If I were to add a task wait before this module returns anything, I could print out start and then print out finished after requiring the module inside of this server script. So first it's printed out start, then it's gonna wait 5 seconds and then it finished. So that's basically just something that you have to keep in mind. And these module scripts can also be required by local scripts so I need to put it in a container where a local script has access to, like replicated storage. And I'm going to add a local script inside of the starter player. And now what's going to happen is that these server scripts and the local scripts, they will have their own individual containers and the module that's run from the local script is gonna only run on the client and same with the server. And I'm going to add like 250 value after let's say one second. And you can see that the server has 6 and 16, while the client has 251. And this is the table that's printed out by the client too. And you can see that these values right here were not affected by the server ones. So you can also have shared modules that are shared between the client and the server. And a good example of it would be to have a math module that could just do different math operations like get percentage of, which can take the percent and then from max value and this one return max value times percentage that's divided by a hundred and then inside of the local script we can have a result number so let's say get the five percent from 50 and then one of the server scripts would also have a result that will get 20 percent from 50 instead but i need to also rename this and i'll play it and one of the scripts gave an error because it's not supposed to add the value. So let me try it again. So the server gave a 10 and the client gave 2.5. And that's because 20% of 50 is 10 and 5% of 50 is 2.5. So you could use this module as a shared math module that's, that has different math operations that are used by both the server and the client. And just to give you more insight about module scripts, I'm gonna leave this link to the documentation in the description, so you can read it yourself, but I just want to read the second paragraph for you because it's very important. And it says that module scripts are essential objects for adhering to the don't repeat yourself principle. When you write a function, write it only once and use it everywhere. Having multiple copies of a function is disastrous when you need to change the behavior. So this says that you should have a module that's holding all the functions instead of let's say having the same math function in one script right here and then having the same function in the local script right there. If you wanted to make a change because you made some wrong calculations, like if this was imagine like much more complex function, you will need to change it right here in this script and then you would also have to search for it inside of the local script too and then make another change right here. And it's just much more convenient to have one module that's storing all the functions that are used in multiple scripts because you only need to change one thing. But continuing, so you should define a function or groups of functions in module scripts and have your scripts and local scripts called require on your module scripts. Keep your code organized. So yeah, that's another use case for module scripts. And I I also know that there will be people saying oh we are just reading the documentation and yeah that's kind of what you are supposed to do as a programmer since it's the best place to get information and I don't only read it but also just explain certain stuff in a way so it's easier for you to understand because not to mention that I get a lot of comments from people saying that some of the stuff in the documentation is very confusing for them so yeah but that's basically the principles of modular programming so if you found this tutorial informative then please leave a like it would really support me and the channel and also become a channel member but that's going to be everything for today so hope you had a nice day and see ya guys